Welcome everyone. As promised, I am sharing with you the channels that I watch on political content here on YouTube and I hope you guys enjoy it because I've been asked. I, I have had um, at least one viewer um, and more say, you know, we want to know who you're watching on YouTube. So this is about 19 channels and um, on the on, at the very end of this video, I will share with you um, a 20th source, okay, so that'll round it out to a nice 20 sources, but definitely 19 uh, channels. And um, yeah, stay to the very end because I, I'm not only going to give you, you know, a list at the very end of where you can find other resources, but as if this isn't enough, right? But um, I give you, a, you know, some channels for some comic relief because after watching these channels well you might need it it's quite sober <laughs> so let's get started first off wearechange.org and i've been following this guy luke radowski since probably 2012 2013 and he actually got involved in grassroots journalism back in New York City around 9-11 when that occurred and I would watch him on YouTube back in the day and I'd be like man this guy has got some balls I mean he was doing what no other journalist would do asking questions that nobody would ask and he would just go out there and you know he'd show up <laughs> to these um, very exclusive events and he would, you know, find people in the crowd that are like kind of shadow government type people who are actually, you know, deep pockets, buying off politicians, you know, moving and shaking things around behind the scenes, um, but very important people. And he would just ask them a question that you know, most journalists would just gasp out like, oh my gosh, you just asked that, you know, and put these people on the spot and which is what real journalists should be doing. And so when I saw him, I was like, my God, this is what journalism is and it's dead in the United States. So if you watch this guy, um, you know, that's, you know, what you can see actually like here's, here's some of it here and this is old footage, but Lord Jacob Rothschild He's confronting a Rothschild banker. Okay, my God, you know, who does that? And uh, you can see, yeah, greatest we are change confrontations, but it goes way back. Currently, he's putting out daily content um, and he has to be very careful because of the censorship. He's walking a very thin line here on YouTube. So what he offers is exclusive content on his website which by the way i do subscribe and i get um i get it in the mail in my email every day exclusive content where yeah you can get the free stuff on youtube every day but then you can also um get paid content every day through your email and i think it's like 15 bucks a month but i pay it because my god we have to support these people we have to and like he's demonetized and this is a reality some of some of you think well you know they're getting paid on youtube number one if they are getting paid it's not a lot and number two a lot of these people have been long been demonetized they get zero zero okay so we've got to support these people with our dollars vote with our dollars to keep the alternative media going in America. And, and if we don't do that, if we play the I'm poor, I can't afford it game, while a lot of people have no problem paying $6 for coffee down at Starbucks, <laughs> come on now, you know, we, we, we've got to change. And so um, I take my own advice and that's what I do. Okay, moving on to the next one, Project Veritas. And I started following them, um, way back these I don't know if you guys know back I guess around 2014 2015 when they were um, doing this undercover work with uh, Planned Parenthood they actually had somebody go into Planned Parenthood and they did an expose showing how it was quite graphic to showing how um, 
Planned Parenthood was profiting off of the sale of aborted fetal body parts. Um, really wicked stuff going on. And of course, you know, blackballed and censored. And by the way, Kamala Harris was uh, the attorney general that was trying to shut them down too and sue the, the investigative journalists who were a part of that expose. But from that point on, I was just like, I'm in on Project Veritas. And they've been doing exposés, you know, recently they did this big expose on uh, Facebook, the Facebook whistleblower. Um, and just today I saw um, this one from a Fox 26 news reporter who is talking about how all of the news that you're getting on mainstream media is basically carefully curated to benefit the people who own these news organizations and the people who are profiting them, you know, like Big Pharma is running ads, uh, things like that. And that's why they're pushing the, the vax and everything on these channels, on these news channels. And so really good stuff. But there's been other, you know, Morgan Common from Facebook, you know, uploads from that. So definitely check them out. They're at 1 million subscribers right now. They just released, you know, a video celebrating that. So a lot of people listen to Project Veritas after being told not to and that they're full of crap. Oh no, decide for yourself. <laughs> I have and I'm, I'm team Project Veritas. Okay. Um, third, we have a uh, facts matter with Roman Balmakov. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he co he's been covering the whole election audit stuff at, in Arizona and elsewhere, um, doing a really good job of that. Um, I used to watch him a lot more actively around the time of the selection, yeah, because he was really the only person that was, um, doing any fair, decent coverage. And he's also following, you know, real journalistic rules and ethics, which when you watch somebody who's doing that, you're gonna see a night and day, right? If you're used to watching CNN or even Fox, you're going to see that these are not journalists on TV. These are, you know, reporters. Then they're, they're reporting, they're reading what is canned. Uh, what is the mainstream narrative that all the um, reporters are parroting, like Mockingbird Media, you know? But when you, when you watch somebody like Roman, you're gonna see, okay, he's bringing, bringing the facts. And I think that's why it's called Facts Matter. But um, he comes on like every evening, I think around five or six, he goes live and uh, he's usually in the comments engaging with the audience and is pretty active on there. And so he shows up to different events, uh, different live events and gives commentary on that. I uh, really appreciate him. And by the way, he is with Epic Times and um, I subscribe to Epic Times. This is another group that we've got to support because it's like, and he'll tell you, by the way, Roman will tell you that they need their, they need support because the day, I think it was the day that Biden was inaugurated, they were demonetized. Very interesting coincidence there, right? So, you know, they're putting out quality content, which is hard to come by, no offense, on YouTube, they're putting out quality content, but they don't make any money off of YouTube at all, at all. So in order to keep them afloat, um, I subscribe to them. And again, it's, it's quite a nominal um, you know, amount of money, uh, less than I think $10. I think there's an introductory $1 for the first month or something like that. And um, they send you additional news in your email and it also ensures that if they get totally taken off of YouTube, they just get disappeared, which a lot of people have. You're able to keep in touch with these people to, you know, figure out what's going on. And by the way, Epic News, from what I understand, is owned by a, um, 
a Chinese American couple who fled China. They fled communism. So the the cause of liberty is very near and dear to their hearts. Uh, unfortunately, it, it's my understanding that th these that this couple, this news organization has really um, been under attack by some people with Communist Party ties out of China trying to shut them down. So definitely people worth listening to, worth supporting, and um, I encourage all to, to check them out. Also, there's OAN, One American News Network. I was listening to them more around the time of the selection. Um, I haven't listened to them much recently, but uh, you know they're doing some uh, good work, especially, I'm trying to remember her name. Yes, <laughs> this one here. I'm trying to remember her name. Let's see if I can pull it up. What? Chanel Rion. Okay, Chanel Rion did an incredible, if you could look up her work on the Dominion, Dominion um, investigative journalism that Chanel Rion did, amazing. And that's what really got my attention for that channel is, and, and again, it's, you, you know, when you look at that, at the work that she did, you're like, my God, this is journalism that we never see in America. This is what journalism is supposed to be. We are not getting this. We're not. All right. Also, um, from time to time, I listen to ACLJ. They're actually suing the Biden administration right now. Um, they go live daily but it's usually like during the day and what's neat is they have a round table of um, attorneys they are a group of attorneys so they're talking about the news and the context of the law and what is lawful and um, yes they are engaged in in suing the Biden administration um, for some things that they consider to be unlawful yeah, so if you want to know more about that, check it out. Another channel I follow is the Ron Paul Liberty Report. And by the way, you know, this he, the, Ron Paul is like the grandfather of the Liberty Movement. Um, I, I think that he's not only influenced me greatly, you know, since 2012, when I first really started listening and understanding and hearing him out, you know, um, but also, I think that he's influenced a lot of these channels and these people that I listen to. They're very pro-liberty minded. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean libertarian, although that, you know, could be encompassing, you know, the, an encompassing belief. But um, there are a lot of people who are independents or Republicans uh, or conservative and once they heard Ron Paul out, I mean, really heard him out, not what the news media wants you to believe about him, but what is really, what does he really believe? Once you get Ron Paul, you're like, my God, this all makes sense. And you realize you've been lied to about Ron Paul. By the way, he should have been our president. Um, those of you who really followed politics back in 2012, um, and I mean, Behind, you know, the behind the scenes alternative media sources, not just the official, right? You would have known that there was election fraud going on in the 2012 RNC uh, Republican National Convention, okay? And he was cheated out of a rightful nomination. He should have been nominated um, as the presidential candidate for 2012, but was cheated out by the Romney people. Um, by the swamp, the status quo type people, okay? So definitely worth somebody listening to, you know, especially if that's all new to you, what I'm sharing with you, you know, it's good to hear his perspective and understand this is what um, the shadow government does not want. This is what they're trying to keep out of every political office. Um, this is what they're stealing fraudulently out of elections. Um, people who believe like this. 
Breitbart, um, on occasion, you know, I listen to Breitbart. I haven't uh, listened to a whole lot of them lately because I've just been so much into crypto. Like I listen to a lot of crypto financial news, which by the way, I put out a video for those of you who missed that. I put that out and I'll put a link for it at the end of this video if you're interested in those sources. Um, but another source I listen to is Sky News Australia, and that is right outside of the United States, which I think is important for us Americans. And, you know, just to get a, a different viewpoint on what people outside of this country think of this country. Now, ordinarily, I mean, I would look at a, this title, Sky News Australia, and I'd be like, oh my God, Australia is already gone for. <laughs> You know, and, I, and unfortunately, I think that they have very much been infiltrated by the same people, the globalists who have been infiltrating the government here in the United States. But they caught my attention during the selection because they actually have people on here that are telling the truth. They know what's up. They know what's going on, and especially if you want to know about China and the economic warfare going on and the, the creeping communism that is is lurking, um, you know, the payoffs, all of that, the, 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 like the Hunter Biden laptop type stories that the mainstream media is burying and censoring. Well, these people cover it. And, you know, when I saw them covering it, I'm like, you know what? You're from Australia, but you got it together, okay? And and that's that's why, you know, I listen to them. London Real, um, this is uh, this is a channel that I listened to a lot last year, 2020, actually leading up to the election. Brian Rose is running it. And he's got LondonReal.tv. They've actually tried to censor him, try to take him down. I've been watching him evolve a bit. He last year was kind of more pro-vaccine, but um, he's very responsive to his viewers as far as I could tell. Because I remember when I saw one of his videos up that was kind of pro-vaccine, I said, uh, no, you need to go listen. You need to interview Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. And what do you know? He had Dr. Sherry Tenpenny on, I don't know if it was for me or other people recommending her, but he started getting a lot of uh, different people, you know, hearing people out who had different views. And I saw him kind of evolving in his mindset. And he's, look, he's got people on with, you know, talking about crypto, which, you know, decentralized finance, which I'm very much into. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, I talked about in my last video on, you know, financial channels I follow. I follow Robert Kiyosaki, but there he is interviewing him. Um, there's a lot of really um, amazing, I mean, so many people just, I, if, yes, check it out his YouTube. But if you don't go to YouTube, go to his, you know, LondonReal.tv because he's got so many um, interviews from very um, respected people who are censored on YouTube, like David Icke. Um, he's got another, uh, a scientist who uh, is like a, is a whistleblower who used to work with um, Fauci during the AIDS research back in the 80s, the early 80s. And I watched an interview with her. My God, it is mind blowing. Like he's got some amazing guests on there, amazing content. But I mean, yes, good stuff on YouTube, but even better stuff on LondonReal.tv. So definitely think about checking that out. And um, Gerald Salente, I've been following him since around 2012 as well. Um, and he's a trends forecaster. He follows the news, he predicts the trends, he can tell you, you know, what's likely coming up over the next uh, new year. He puts out a magazine. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of a little too pricey for me. I think it's like $300. Would love to support him, but it, this just hasn't, right? Been my priority um, as a single mom. I've got other things to pay for. But I do watch him on his channel and he's on fire. He's an older gentleman. Uh, he's out and I think he's in New York. Um, and 
Um, he's pretty spicy, you know, <laughs> like, uh, he's kind of, he can be like a cranky old man from time to time. No offense if he's watching this. Um, to each their own. That's just his personality, you know, and he'll get worked up and fired up and some people don't like that. Um, but in his defense, I would say, you know, honestly, I think it is an, a, a normal response to be angry about some of the stuff that's going on in the news is actually not normal to be have this kind of NPR, unaffected, neutral, unbiased sounding, meek, you know, passive little intellectualizing voice, emotionless, you know? Uh, I mean, if that kind of thing appeals to you, then by all means, don't watch him, <laughs> you know? But um, I feel he's authentic and he is mad and for good reason. And more of us should be, you know? Um, there's a time and a place for everything. And so he puts out, I think it's weekly content. He puts out, um, is it weekly? Um, I'd say at least once a week, you're gonna hear from him and uh, he's going to talk about all manner of things, economics, um, look, you know, the COVID situation, mask mandates, he'll talk about all manner of things on here. So buckle up. I mean, if you can handle that, I say definitely go for it. And I can, I just love his honesty. He's a New Yorker. And um, I think it's from the Bronx. Okay, anyway. Uh, Rob Braxman Tech is another guy. I just recently discovered this guy. Um, he's a techie. And he knows a lot about how these big tech companies are surveilling us with or without our permission. And he advises people on how to bypass this, these privacy violations, this intrusive surveillance state that we're now in. And I haven't watched him in a, in a while, but I mean, he's like, he talks about how to get rid of the location tracking and, um, he talks about all the new technology going on, like Apple bots, Google bots. Sometimes he goes live and that's, that's interesting. You know, the guy is really smart, but it's, it's, it's amazing to find out that some of these really brilliant people, they can't even get their own family and friends to listen to them and just think they're just, losing their marbles but of course it's the programming you know it's the programming that they're they're enduring but um he talks about this are we being divided the brainwashing okay um how google search results are being manipulated which to me is a hot topic i mean last year i got off of google and i switched to DuckDuckGo because i was tired like i cannot find certain things anymore um on the google search engine and I know it's there, you know, but there's certain people that don't come up, like the alternative health people are being buried on what page of the search results, definitely not the first or second. And it's just, it's appalling even when I put their name in um, and what it is I'm searching for under their name. All these other conventional doctors and groups show up ahead of what I specifically said I was looking for. and. This is what they're doing. They're suppressing voices. They're suppressing certain opinions. And I'm just like, oh, I'm done with it. And he's kind of part of, you know, helping me to, to make the switch. I mean, and there's even more stuff that I could do because he's pretty comprehensive about it. But look at this talking about you already have a social credit score. And I heard some talk about that late last year. And I wanted to find out, well, how do we already have a social credit score? Because I've long suspected, by the way, that um people are not wanting to do business with pe me you know like i had trouble finding work because maybe i don't know how they they find everything that i do online <laughs> even though i work under aliases you know um 
they're finding me and well he explains it, it is through the social media and he talks about how all of this is going to continue to evolve and he gives suggestions on how to get around it and have more privacy so people can't just you know so you can have you can have your online life and not have to worry about being um you know financially punished for having views that are not politically correct all right so i want to talk about um paul joseph watson and uh he used to be and he might still be with infowars um i would love to say go watch infowars on here but infowars was taken off you know with alex jones and i'm not 100 percent in agreement with everything that alex jones says or does um however uh, I do, I have listened to a lot of Alex Jones, even since the early 90s when Alex Jones was on Austin Access Cable. And so through Alex Jones, I came to know some of the people that I'm going to introduce you to now who have not been taken off of YouTube, but my God, would they have to walk the line? Um, number one, Paul Joseph Watson. And... Um, really like him he this guy's smart very sharp he's out in the uk um and he's just he's kind of snarky though he's kind of sarcastic as well and um he is on twitter i follow him on twitter as well so um funny stuff that he puts out there but again you know <laughs> he's got a bit of a bite uh, to what he has to say and, and he does a lot of commentary on um pop culture, you know, criticizing pop culture, criticizing wokeism. Um, but he's, he does it quite intelligently. Uh, so I definitely say check him out. And then there's Truth Stream Media. Um, this is a couple who actually met uh, working for Alex Jones and they've since left and they, uh, I think they've gotten married and they have a child now that they homeschool. I believe they're Christians. And um, they have a lot of almost documentary style type content, uh, but, but they've been on the list of people to be censored and banned, um, you know, by Google. So, you know, they, they're, they're walking a tight rope with YouTube and a lot of the content that they put out uh, some people might consider it very dry, okay, because they, they, they're doing real journalism. They're talking about the facts. This is not really entertainment. This is education, which is, is what is something that you're not, right? many of us are, what we think is the news, what we consider to be the news is actually entertainment, opinion pieces. What they're presenting is education, and actual journalism so for some of you if you need things to pop 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 this might not be the channel for you but my god they unearth some deep gems of wisdom and knowledge um, if you want it to pop 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 i say go over to paul joseph Wat joseph watson because his videos are like three to seven minutes long and he just hits it he just like <laughs> He is on it and it's just point after point after he hits it hard and he hits it quick. So, um, also, um, Mark Dice. Okay. Now he's, he's been around for quite a while. Um, he's done some funny stuff. Okay. He, he covers the news, but he kind of gives it, he gives it a lot of humor and flair. Um, and he's been doing funny stuff for a while. I've been watching him for years now probably since 2012 2013 i started watching mark dice i believe he's out in california at least he was he used to go out on the streets and interview californians and ask them questions you know like he'd say he'd give them a dollar and then he'd give he'd show them a gold coin like one ounce of gold and he'd say what do you want you want a dollar or you want one ounce of gold and they'd take the dollar and he would laugh at him <laughs> because he'd be like you know do you know how much this is worth this is worth like three hundred dollars okay and they just took one dollar because they don't know the value and but he's laughing 
sadly, I mean, I guess we can, you could cry about these things or you can laugh. Mark Dallas is laughing about it. Um, you know, he, he would go out in the streets and do funny stuff like that. And I think that's how I first caught on to him. But yeah, if you watch him, he just does some kind of hilarious coverage of the news. And this is where we get into the comedic relief, okay? I'm, I wanna share with you, cause after you look at all the stuff that I just previously mentioned, you're probably gonna need to get some comedic relief cause that could be really heavy, right? So yes, Mark Dice is part of that crowd that can help lighten up some heavy matters. Um, the other funny people that I watch that do political commentary, Awaken with JP, um, this guy, love them and you know what i you gotta watch out with some of these people because i when i was preparing for this video i could not find his uh his channel listed in my subscriptions i think i was unsubscribed be careful because i've been hearing about this going on and as a channel creator i think i've experienced it myself are people being unsubscribed because, you know, and I wasn't getting notifications and I don't recall unsubscribing um, to this guy, all right? But I went ahead and subscribed again and let me make sure all my, you know, see all notifications from him. But I think, you know, he puts up posts several times, um, a week and he comp like he, here's one about, Fauci. Um, really kind of tongue in cheek, um, sarcasm, you know, and, and I will say that I think the comedians that are doing this type of humor right now, the political humor, uh, they're probably most effective of all at getting the truth out. Uh, because you could always say, well, it's satire. Um, I, I wasn't saying this for a fact, but it does shine a light on how ridiculous some things are that we're being told and that people believe because of the media. But because they're not presenting as media, they can, they're just making jokes about it. Well, maybe they can get away with it a little bit more than some of these other news channels. Um, there's Brent Pella. He's another comedian that, by the way, this is funny how spiritual people talk about politics. Um, he has done some work with Awaken with JP and that's how I found out about him. But and he, do, he does some non-political stuff as well. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to watch that. Beyond Crack, Beyond Meat parody. Okay, I'm gonna have to watch that. But there's there's a lot of uh i think my favorite thing he puts out is uh the gavin newsom impersonations like if you go to his channel first thing you watch gavin newsom impersonations you know gavin newsom is the governor for now of california so funny funny stuff all right um also there's uh Ryan Long and uh, Ryan Long can get a little raunchy, okay? <laughs> um, and so can Brent Pella, okay? But Ryan Long especially so. And so if, if you if you like clean humor, I'd say the cleanest person here is Awaken with JP, okay? And he's a family man, by the way, recently married, had a new child, lives in Austin, Texas. Um, Brent Pella and Ryan Long, I'm not so sure about their backgrounds. They just can, they're a lot, a lot more spicy, okay? Like a lot more edgy. And so if you can't take a joke, <laughs> maybe, maybe these two guys are not for you. But um, this was hilarious. Politician says female journalists of color only. And you know, that had to do with Lori, was it Lightfoot? Lightfoot, is that her name? I can't even remember but he was doing a, a kind of a spoof off of that. Um, this is cracking jokes at Bitcoin investors when you buy the top of every investing trend, like people who are losing their money on Bitcoin, which I thought was funny. Um, men for total equality, hilarious. Um, 
So anyway, and finally, Joey B. Tunes, which I found out about him through Paul Joseph Watson. Uh, but Joey B. Tunes uh, does very quick, like under three minutes, just making jokes about pop culture and the condition of society. And a lot of times he'll go on a TikTok and he'll grab video off of TikTok to, you know, say what's happening to us. Like how, how ridiculous has society gotten and, and will it get, you know, if we continue on this way. But yeah, this one I just recently watched of a guy who was playing guitar, a street musician, and just showing how nasty the people were being to him. And it was quite sad because the man, the, the, the musician was very talented, but you can see all these people like telling him to shut up and that's noise and blah, blah, blah. And then in the midst of it, there's this cute little innocent little girl who's dancing and having fun and everything. And uh, so Joey B. Tunes was um, showing just, the condition of society, you know, um, and, and commentary on it, but he's kind of, he's got a, he's got a sarcastic tone about it. So those are the people that I have. That's 19 and, um, 20 here, uh, is a list that I shared in my last video of, you know, channels that have been censored 400 websites, I should say websites uh, that Google doesn't want you to visit. And if you scroll down, you can look at these yourself. And, um, you know, I might talk more about them. I, I'm gonna say some of them I've mentioned in this video, like ACLJ, oh, I mentioned them. Uh, there are some others that I've left off that I haven't talked about. Um, look, David Icke, but, and you can go check this list out. I'll put the link for it down below. But I would love it if, you know, there's somebody that I left out of this video that you think is important, that you listen to and you want to share with me, please, you know, let me know in the comments down below. And I may cover it in an upcoming video, a follow-up video, so, you know, that my viewers have a voice here and can share with other people. Um, some great channels that I might have overlooked. All right, that's all I've got for now. And uh, yeah, if you wanna watch the last video on my uh, economic channels, financial channels that I watch here on YouTube, it's this video here and you can click that. Until next time, wishing you guys all the best, be blessed.